This video is being sponsored by Educative.io, which has a collection of well-written crafted courses for software developers, from Python to front-end to system design to scalability to Docker and whatnot. Learning at Educative is really powerful because they have all coding workspaces in the browser itself, and also they offer Educative for limited, in which you pay only once for all the courses. They have annual and monthly plans, and my audience gets a 10% additional discount on the 40% campaign they have for India. So you get a 46% discount on using the coupon Rachid and you can have the link in the description below. Hey everyone, welcome to a series on system design in which we pick topics one by one and deep dive into them. The topic for today is reliability. Now first of all, what is reliability? In the most simplest form, I would say that reliability is nothing but when the application is performing the functions as the user expects. So if you're talking about a blog website, if a user is saving his or her blog, then it's expected that the next time when they try to visit it, it's still there and it's intact and it's saved correctly. So this is what reliability is. It's very simple that the application is behaving as it's intended to do. Now, there are a few things which can make such a simple task very difficult. For example, let's say you are having a form in which the phone number field, some user as a string and then submits it and while you were saving, your backend crashes while it was trying to parse the phone number as a number or an integer, all right? So if your app cannot tolerate the user making some weird mistake, right? Then I wouldn't call your app as reliable. Your backend is not reliable at all. Now, before we move forward with it, I would like to discuss for a brief moment why is reliability so important well if i'm being honest it's not that important um, the reason for that is re being reliable is not the first priority that most of startups have however i would mention that as your company grows it would really care about managing its reputation because think about a very big app like google photos if for example there is a newborn baby in a family and the parents they are capturing the snapshots and photos and they are uploading it to google photos app and uh, they you know keep on clearing the photos from their phone to keep it you know uh, like have enough storage for their phone to function efficiently so after three months or four months if they go back to the google photos app and if they are not able to see those photos or if those photos are corrupted on the back end of google then this would be really bad right so companies like Google, they would really invest a lot in being reliable because otherwise it's really bad experience and such companies, they really do care about their users as well as um, the reputation. The other thing is reliability is also important because if, for example, you are not reliable, your backend is not reliable because of, for example, not doing better error handling or if you are having some bugs, then the thing is, if you're not capturing them towards the development side and it can be due to some reasons like lack of testing or you were not having testing as a priority because you had other deliveries in your mind. Um, so this can also affect your productivity because these things can stay dormant for a while and later on when they come up or when they fired up, you realize that there is some bug, you do the diagnosis, at that point of time you have to do end to end diagnosis most of the times and then you figure out okay this is where the problem is and then you fix it and then you test or probably you release it to production if it was handled beforehand while you were in the development phase it could have saved a lot of time so that is why if you are if your system is reliable if it's doing a lot of things as is expected to it's well tested then it is also in the longer and it's more productive so having said that again as i'm saying it's always a trade-off and Re making systems reliable it of course needs development cost and sometimes you might have to sacrifice on that for example if you are developing a prototype or something like that all right now let's talk about fault versus failures um, so failure is something like entire system entire app is down and user is not able to get the service for which your app was meant to do however fault is basically um, you can say something like if you are having 10 servers and one server died just because of something like probably it was running on some machine where hard disk got corrupted or probably there was an outage 
and but if you are having other servers if you are having eight or nine different servers then overall i i don't think there would be any impact and you can wait to turn that other server which went down you can turn it up again right so this is a very good reliable example in which you were having multiple servers to take care of such faults and you did not let faults to become a failure right if you are having only one server and if for example let's say the hard disk corrupted or probably there was power outage because of his your server is down at that point of time if you are not having any other server then the users will not be able to use your app and you can talk about it in terms of availability but thing is your app is not reliable if it is not able to tolerate faults so that is where we talk about faults and failures faults may result into failures and that's where we have to do engineering work or even hardware work sometimes for example having a generator kind of thing for a data center if there is a power outage right so fighting such things in which we are stopping faults to become failures is what we have to put a lot of work into and we call such systems as fault tolerant systems so if you have a fault tolerant system the next important thing is it makes your life easy why because now you can actually have that confidence that while you are going to sleep and you are working in a big company if your systems are fault tolerant you could have a good sleep because you have that confidence that even if there is something that is going wrong we still we will get alerts we but we will have time to solve that issue while there is no impact on the user because for the user they really do not need to know about what is going wrong in your system right so this is the overall agenda and i think the netflix kios monkey is a great example over here um so this is like developed by netflix and what it does is basically it actually creates faults by triggering them deliberately yes that's right it randomly kills uh, individual processes of your app and um, if your app is still working fine you have that confidence right so it's ensuring that you are generating fault tolerant systems so this is a great example and uh, as 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 i'm saying like netflix is really huge so these are some things which companies really care about and the best thing i believe is that uh, as engineers we also create the necessary tooling to make our lives easy all right so the next thing is we have to talk about types of faults well the first can be hardware faults we have software faults and then we can have human errors now hardware faults is something like when you can say the hard disk is crashing or you can say the ram is becoming faulty or you can say the power grid is having a blackout right so all such things or um, you can have human errors as hardware faults for example um, the operator put a wrong hard disk which is corrupted for example or something like that or they plugged in the wrong network cable right so these are like hardware faults and these are not very rare these happens quite a lot for example hard disks they have a mean time to failure of about 10 to 50 years and if you are talking about data centers they use like thousands of disks right so it's quite normal that you can say that there is almost like one to two disks which are dying per day now you can fight this very easily by using redundancy for example um you can have multiple hard drives right and you can use the raid configurations and the servers may have multiple power supplies so that you know the basic idea is that if one piece is going bad or corrupt you can have the other redundant piece to take over right and it can do the primary job over there of it can be electricity or it can be hard disk right so this is the basic idea of uh, so basically this still like basically this is not saying that it's 100% safe but it reduces the probability of the fault turning into a failure so having hardware redundancy is good but often people also use software fault tolerance techniques in addition to this for example you can have multiple servers right um and this is also beneficial in multiple ways as i said few minutes back that if you are having multiple servers uh serving the same api for example then if one of your servers or one of your boxes if you want to do some scheduled downtime or do some you know admin routine work or do some upgradation on that box you can easily take that down and the rest of your servers can handle the load and then you can you know turn it up again like if you want to update all the servers you can do that one by one in you know as a you can say as a transition or rollout period so it's very quite normal to see software fault techniques in in the same ecosystem as the hardware redundancy 
all right the next category is about software faults or software errors i would say so this is the category of like errors and bugs that impact the overall system for example um you can say that there is a leap second of june 30 2012 and it actually caused many applications to hang simultaneously due to a bug in linux kernel right and such things can happen even like if you're having let's say 10 servers uh, for some api that saves the form data and as i'm saying like um if it's a phone number and if someone is entering a string of characters in that and if all of your systems fail to do the parsing or do error handling in that so such are software bugs which will cause every application server to crash and then it can lead to a failure the other cases can be like um, you have a bunch of different microservices or different components which interact with each other and if one of the service is really you know slowing down the entire process or the entire service as a whole then this can again lead to some unresponsiveness from the user side right because if you are hitting five six different apis and if one of them is slow enough the entire process is slowed down because of that the other thing can be cascading failures in which you know um, for example it is quite often in the pipeline scenarios in which the output of one job is the input to the next one and if there is some malformation or deformation happening in the output of one pipeline it can lead to a cascading failure it can lead to or it can trigger faults in other components and because of which the entire system can fail so like how can you solve such issues i mean this can be really uh, taken into account while you are in the development phase if you are doing enough testing then a lot of software bugs would be captured and if you have good code coverage then and also if you have integration tests and all those kind of things happening then it's really good that you wouldn't be having a lot of troubles but as i'm saying there can be a lot of things so you can do some good practices like you can also have the monitoring in place you can also have some reliability in the sense that if your server is crashing you have some other process which is watching whether the service is running or not if it's not running it restarts or it starts it again so that even if there is a downtime it's minimized it's not manual it's all automated so that it's not that you are waiting for the alert to come to yourselves and then you are firing the command to restart the server and for example supervisor ctl or supervisor d it's a very common uh, utility app which people use instead of cron tabs to do such things wherein it's watching whether the process is running or not if it's not it starts it again so these are some like easy out of the box utilities that we have um, to maintain reliability the next category is faults happening due to human errors and yes wherever humans are there mistakes are bound to happen and that is why as software developers we want to automate as many things as possible while we are working in some product now what uh, I, i'll give you a few examples of what human errors means it might happen that while you were turning on or making some release um, you had a wrong configuration it was not having the parameter set correct because of which your app is not reliable or it's not working correctly it might happen that there is some dependency file and the path to that was incorrectly mentioned in the configuration file because of which some part of your uh, service is not working correctly because things were not loaded correctly in the first place because of human error and these things quite happen a lot of times uh, it might also happen that while you were doing the release the build was done in debug mode instead of release mode which led to higher file size as well as probably it might happen that um, some things are running slow just because it's in debug mode and yes such things have happened i have seen those things happen in production so there are a lot of things which you can do to solve this you can of, of course do a lot of testing as i'm saying uh, you, you can do system integration tests you can do unit testing so that uh, you have proper co code coverage and you are seeing that things are working fine also sometimes what happens is that um you do not have a lot of environments especially in startups uh, i have seen that there are not enough different uh, segregation done for production versus testing versus uat and it might happen that while people are doing or playing around or like there is some new joiner who is who does not know how to play with the web service or your app correctly it might happen that they trigger some scenario which was not captured in your test so far and it leads to a fault or failure right so having that segregation so that production is not never impacted by the mistakes you are doing as a sandbox environment right so having those segregation is really important and lastly like uh, if things are going wrong and you do not know that's really bad so alerting and monitoring is very important you should have telemetry which is nothing but sending performance metrics some to some aggregation systems in which you can have a view of how healthy your system is 
if it's not up to a mark you should get alerts so that before faults or failures happen you start investigating and solve the problem about why your performance metrics are degrading so these are some things which uh, which we can do to fight human errors also like if you are doing a release and you're not using ci cd and you're doing all things manually it might happen that you deploy the wrong binary or wrong configuration file so at that point of time of course this should not happen but even if it does happening it's very important for you to have some mechanism in which you can fight back if you have some auto weighted or easy way to quickly roll back to the last configuration or the last binary it would be really cool lastly we, what you can also do is um, to minimize the impact to your users you can also do a b testing kind of thing so do not do release in one go but it can be a process like the first phase can be only deploying or calling this feature or deploying this feature to let's say 10% of the users right and so and on so basically if 10% of users are using and you see some shoots in your telemetry that something is failing something is going wrong this is something which i have often seen people use like when they are not having enough testing they actually use their clients to do that testing for themselves so they pick a they pick a small uh, set of random users and then they do the deployment for them so that uh, they look at the performance metrics and see that okay if the new uh, feature is working as it was intended to and if it's not if you are getting any errors they fix it right away and you know repeat the process until you finally are having that confidence to deploy it to whole set of users so yeah that's pretty much i had in mind when it comes to reliability in case you have any more suggestions or something please drop them in the comments if you found this helpful make sure to like this video subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon so that you don't miss further content also thanks to the ddia book which is really cool and it, i found it really knowledgeable so if you are interested in more system design you can also read the book i can leave the link in the description below so that you can have a look at it too